Hey guys, Justin Seeley here. Welcome back to another video tutorial. If you are new here, please consider subscribing and also don't forget to smash the like button if you find this video helpful. And as always, don't forget to turn on notifications so you get a little ding every single time I produce a new video. We talk a lot about Photoshop, Illustrator, graphic design, technology, you name it. If it's in the creative space, I'm probably talking about it on this channel. So if that's what you're looking for, you've come to the right place. Today, as we start the Masters, uh, which is a golf tournament for those of you who don't follow sports ball, um, I thought I'd do a quick Photoshop tutorial for you to show you how you can map your logo onto a golf ball. Uh, this is something a lot of people like to do for promo materials and things like that, but it's also a part of golf lore in some ways. If you remember back to the Masters a few years ago when Tiger Woods hit that big swinging chip shot and the ball slowly trickled into the hole and as it made its final revolution, you just saw that little Nike logo. Can you imagine how many golf balls that sold Nike? Well, I think that kind of started a craze because after that, when I went to golf tournaments, you started seeing people's logos all over the place on golf balls, just hoping that they might get a marketing moment like that. But in any case, I can't help you with your chip shot, nor can I get you on national TV, but I can sure show you how to map your logo onto a golf ball. So let's check it out. So here we are inside of Photoshop. And as you can see, I've already done this for you on this particular uh, golf ball here. And you can see inside the logo, even if I zoom in a little bit, you can see some of the ripples coming through. You can see that the golf ball sort of follows the contour of this and it, it just it, it's really really more realistic than just copying and pasting your logo on top of it so how did i do this well i did it a couple of ways let's take a look i'm going to go over here to my start file first and foremost this is just a vector logo pulled in from adobe illustrator just copy and paste it over so i'm just going to put that on top of the golf ball and then i'm going to hit command or control t to transform it and i'm going to shrink it down to size, eh, something kind of like that. Doesn't ma really matter how big or how small, that's totally up to you. Golf ball logos do tend to be a little bit smaller though, so maybe just something kind of like that will work. So step number one is to make the logo look like it's actually printed on top of the golf ball. So the first thing we're gonna do is change the blend mode to multiply. Now, it doesn't really make a big change to it, but if you take a look, I'll zoom in here so you can see it a little bit better. If you take a look at the before, see how much brighter it is, and then the after, and you can actually start to see some of those ripples start to come through. So that's, that's step number one. We had to make sure that a little bit of that golf ball shows through, and also that the golf logo is not necessarily as um, vector looking as it was before. Step number two, we're gonna do a little something called blend if. And blend if is just a way of saying, make the darker parts of one image shine through or the lighter parts of, a, of an image shine through. Anyway, I am not gonna ex explain the technical part of it. I'll just show you how it works. So come over here to your layers panel, double click out to the right hand side of the uh, logo layer. And then what you're gonna do here, is you're gonna use this underlying layer slider down here at the bottom. And so for the underlying layer slider, first thing I'm gonna do is hold down the Option key on Mac, the Alt key on PC, and I'm gonna split this right here. And we're gonna take this down to about 225, somewhere in that range. And as I do that, check out the before, and then after as I start to move it over. If I go, if I go way over, a lot of the golf ball starts to show through, but if I keep it right around 225, something like that, you can start to see just a little bit of those glossy areas shining through. I'm gonna do the same thing over here, but this time I'm not gonna use the option or alt key, I'm just gonna bring in some of the shadows. So we're gonna bring that over to about 25 maybe, something like that. Let's see here, 25, actually, you know what? Something maybe around 30 works just like that and so now if i zoom in you can see we've got a lot more of the contours and the shadows and even a little bit of the shine of the golf ball shining through the logo which is really super cool okay let's hit okay and 
zoom out just a little bit. Now I'm gonna select the background layer and I'm going to grab my elliptical marquee tool. And I'm gonna make a selection. And if you wanna make an easy selection, use your rulers to do a top and side guide around the golf ball. And then just come to the crosshair like this and click and drag out. And you should get a pretty close selection around the golf ball. What we really want is the middle of the golf ball so it doesn't have to be precisely around the edges. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna copy that and I'm going to create a new document, Command or Control N, hit enter to commit to the size that's on the clipboard and then paste it in just like you see here. And once I've done that, I am then going to invert by using Command or Control I to invert the colors here. We're going to desaturate it with Shift Command or Shift Control on the PC and the letter U. And you see what I'm doing here? Making it black and white. I'm also kind of defining the spots, the circles, the dimples on the golf ball. Now let's accentuate those a little bit more with the Levels command. So bring up Command and Control L on your keyboard. And what you want to do is you want to bump the highlights up and maybe even bump the midtones up a little bit and then bump the shadows down a little bit. What you're looking for is contrast, but you want those defined shapes and circles. And so what I'll do now is hit OK. And I'm just going to save this. So Command S and we're going to save this as ball map two. There we go. There we go. And we can close that. Okay. Go back to our golf ball that we were working on before. Command and control D to deselect the selection. Grab the golf ball logo up at the top. Go here and go to filter, distort, displace. Now, there are a lot of things you can do here in this dialog box. What I'm gonna tell you to do is just leave it like it is. Hit OK. And then find your ball map.psd. And once you do that, you should see a noticeable shift in the golf ball. And if you didn't see it, because it was kind of fast, watch this right here. Here is before and after. See how now it looks like it kind of dips into the valleys of the dimples of the golf ball. And you can see the little parts of the golf ball shining through. You can see the shadows down there at the bottom. And that is our finished product. So as you can see, mapping things to different surfaces in Photoshop is relatively easy. And that's the point of this tutorial. It's not just about golf, but if you have any type of thing that you want to put a logo on a wall or a sign or you want to put your logo on a shirt pair of jeans whatever it might be use techniques like displacement and those blend if sliders to really bring out some of those underlying textures and also to bring in some of the underlying shapes because you want the logo to look more natural you want it to look like it's actually printed onto or set onto whatever it is that's behind it could be a golf ball, could be anything. So that's gonna wrap it up for me. Thank you so much for joining me for this tutorial. I really appreciate it. Again, if you have not done so already, I invite you to subscribe to the channel, turn on notifications so you get notified every time I produce a new video. And also don't forget to click that like button if you found this video helpful. As always, you can find me outside of here on Twitter at Justin Seeley. And I got nothing else, so I'll see you next time. Thanks a lot.